It's empty. <laughs> Man, I know I always say I have special guests that come in the building, but today, today is very, very special. It's very exclusive. It's not very often that stars walk in the building. So without further ado, if you want to pull your mic to you real quick, good sir. Yo, go, yo, ahead, yo. go ahead and let everybody know who you are. Tell them what you do. That is funny, and it's going to work, too. Be in the gym, so it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make it happen. <laughs> it's going to work. You looking like that one. I was like, like, wait a minute. Why? I ain't never seen nobody try that. Yeah, uh, man. Well, I'm different. Coming out of South Florida, go ahead and introduce yourself, good sir. Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? It's, a, it's your boy, Lou Bo. Living City Months in the building, man. You know, appreciate y'all having me here. Man, it is an honor and a privilege. Thank you for even taking the time and effort to come here. I know it was hard for you because <laughs> we tried to do it one time. We had to reschedule. <laughs> we did. So we got to have. We made it happen, though. So let's go ahead and start with the obvious news. What did you do this weekend that was just so on fire that made headline news everywhere? Let's talk about it. This weekend, um, I would say not this weekend. I would say this week. Um, I was on. Um, Shout out Daily Flash. I was on Daily Flash uh, yeah. this week. It just aired Friday, and that was that's a national show. You know what I'm saying? There so go. you know it was good to perform on there in Orlando, and um, you know just you know be in front of the cameras on television and everything, and get that whole experience. You know that was my first that was my first uh, real television performance. I was just about to ask that. Yeah. that was like your first time, like actually you had to go through all the motions. And yeah. Like, so tell me a little bit about that because I personally have never been on television. So tell me about like what's it like going from like doing like podcasts and stuff like that, and then going to national TV. Um, I think I think the difference is it's just it's just way more. Um, not saying that podcast isn't organized, mm -hmm. but everything is organized down to the minute. Ooh. So it's like you know, for the first two minutes, we're gonna talk about this, and then on that, we're gonna talk about that, like. You know, of course, so with television, very, yeah, very you, know, you only got a certain amount, right? And that's not just a, um, it's, it's an international show, mm -hmm. so they have a Latino segment. They have a, you know, so it's just very, very structured and very extremely organized, quiet set. You know, it, it's it was an experience, man. You know, they had me backstage, um, and and just you know doing the whole, you know, before I come out, pre-recorded, like yeah. it was, it it, 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 it kind of felt like I was on more or something. Yeah, like that's. <laughs> I can only imagine how I really, I know that's like a, that's like almost, a, I can say a life changing experience because now you want to do it more, I can imagine. For sure. It, it definitely, um, it de I mean, I felt comfortable with it, okay. but um, it was an experience, man. You know, it was an experience. It was cool, man. It was very embracing. So, yeah, I'm with it, definitely. Man, I can't, like I said, I can't honestly say I've done the same podcast and maybe like, you know, run in front of a news camera and go, hi, mom. You know, that's probably the most I've been on national TV, so yeah. I can't really relate to that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's the whole production. It's just like 80, 80 million cameras from all angles, and it's just like, quiet on set, and you can hear, literally hear a pin drop when it's filming. Like, oh, that's too deep. That's yeah, too yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's talk about some of the places you have performed and just some of the headlights. Head, oh, wow. Headlines. There we go. I got you. Well, listen, man, we <laughs> work. It was a long <laughs> night. All right, look, it was a long night. Uh, so, so if you would please tell us some of the biggest places that you have ever just headlined, like that you remember that were are most memorable to you. Uh, I was uh, I was actually at um, believe it or not, man, one of, one of the most one of the top ones for me was um, was uh, Beecham, believe it or not. Okay. Beecham was a Beecham was a big one for me um, because that was my first time doing an audience uh, that large without another headline. So do you do you remember how many people were actually in the crowd? It was it was more than twenty five hundred for sure. Beecham was Beecham do numbers, man. So with that in mind, since we're talking about numbers, do you remember the first time you performed? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How was that? Because a lot of rookie yeah. artists out there, you know, everybody sees where you are now. But let's go back in time. Let's talk about Young you when you well, first started off. Yeah. So when um when um when I when I when I first performed, um, honestly, I was comfortable because when I first started out, it was with the group. Okay. So 
I had already been supporting those guys so much till my comfort zone was there because I'm with I'm practically with my homies and I'm on stage the whole time and I know they songs word for word. Of course. So it came to a point where it was like, man, Lou, you you know everybody always knew just joking around that I could spit. So it was like, man, why, man, now you up here, you come to all our shows, man, you might well, you might as well, you might well drop a record, bro. So what actually inspired you to drop that first record? Um, I met I met this dude, um, I met this guy named Ducci, and um, and he had some some context and took some upscale to for me to perform at an upscale club because he heard me freestyle. Okay. And um, the club was one of the biggest clubs called Space in Miami at the time. I know you're talking about. And Space was just like it was basically it was an opportunity for me to go from it was an opportunity for me to go from you know local strip club performance to top tier in movies you know one of the top one of the top five clubs at the moment. So it's good. On my, club. I know we're like divergent on a lot of different scales, but you yeah. just said something that caught my interest. You said something that took you from one scale to the next. Yeah. Why is that exactly? Because well, connections and relationships. Because this is the this is why I bring that up. A lot of artists believe that just because they perform somewhere big, they can just go to the next level, just yeah. like that. And I, I, I kind of want you to break that down if you don't mind, because literally you're speak, you're dropping gems right now. I hope that the people that are listening to this are like taking notes, because a lot of young artists follow me. I want you to tell them exactly what it took for you to go from literally that strip club performance, performing at open mics. You know, doing a performance here and there, getting paid here and there to just going to the next level. Well, so for me, honestly, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man, it's you really gotta do good business. Like, like you're not just gonna walk into these situations. They're gonna look at how you carry yourself. That's that's the big oh, thing. Right. People, before I know anything about you, I know how you look. You understand what I'm saying? And people might not know who you are, but they could guess who you are or try to figure out who you are. If you look like somebody, there you go. You gotta carry yourself. There's a lot of guys that make talented music, but they look like they're going to the corner store when they're coming out. So you just you don't put yourself in the level. I heard Rick Ross say this. He said, if I'm watching the video and a guy has swag and he and he carried himself right, so he has that look. Mm -hmm. I even if his song is trash, I'll give him another shot to hear him again because he has the look. See, there we go. And, and, and nowadays, so you got to, and, and for me, that got me the introduction to even have conversations and meet people because I meet a lot of strangers just based off of how I carry myself in the club, how I carry, how I move. Mm -hmm. Once you move proper, you move a certain way, a lot of people befriend you and want to know who you are. They don't know what business you do, but you look like somebody, and they'll come up to you and say, what's up, big dog? What's up, man? What you do, man? You know, I see everybody showing you love. What you do? And he said, I do music. All right, I'm a producer. And the next thing you know, you build those relationships. So, but that's that's how you build those relationships. You move proper. See, drop a gem. And I hope everybody out there is really listening. I hope everybody out there is taking notes because it's a lot of artists that come on here and they self-promote themselves. This man, literally this whole time, has been dropping nothing but gems for younger artists. So right now, we're going to give him a chance to drop gems on himself. Go ahead and introduce your first song for us, and let's give the people a taste of what you got. So, I'm, so I'm, my first my first song is probably like the one that helped me uh, get into a lot of different places and organizations. It was Saucy, man. To me, that was to me. I feel like it's my biggest commercial record. Okay. And um, because it's, it's, a, it's such a universal sound, mm -hmm. um, and, and um, it's important to have that to be able to put that on certain okay. television shows and things like that. So. Man, yeah, this is your boy Lubo representing Dade County, the Liberty City Monster. And then right now, y'all tune in to Lubo Saucy. Yeah. Personality, bro, you can't go to bed. If I never, they 
Unpredictable is actually the best though because like you never know what's gonna happen and on top of that being unpredictable is fun. It is for the good and the bad, for the worst and the best. It's fun. It's, 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 <laughs> it, it can be fun. It can be good and bad if you come out of that. <laughs> I mean, you, you just what they always say. You gotta see it through to the end. Yeah, you're That's right. It. You just gotta see it through to the end. You're right. All right, welcome back to Free World Radio. That was a quick little commercial break. That Straight song, up. that song was really nice. I'm gonna steal that from you and jam that at a couple of my parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. That I'm gonna show you. Um, so let's talk about it. Speaking of songs, what new music you got coming up? Yeah, man, I, I I'm excited about this next one, man. Um, oh, yeah, man. You know, for a while I've been kind of like. Uh, I, I kind of been holding back because. But why? It, because I'm trying to please too many audiences, mm. and and, I'm, and and when you're trying to be versatile, you know, um, sometimes it can, it can take you out of your zone. And, and 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 not saying that being versatile isn't my zone, but it's like you got that signature move. You feel mm-hmm. me? It's like saying I can shoot the three ball, but. I like to, I like to do a three. I like to bang. You know what oh, I'm mean? saying? Man. So that's kind of where I'm at. Right? This this song here was more so like it wasn't pressure to 
oh, you need to rec- make a TikTok type song, mm-hmm. or you need this is what popping right now. You need to do this type of record. It was none of that. You know what I'm saying? It was just more so. No influence around me. Nobody in the studio with me. You know, I was just in that mood and said, you know what, man? Let me. I mean, this this is what my mood is telling me. You know, Lubo, talk your shit. Like, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's bad to be humble because motherfuckers forget. I mean, you're 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 your own worst enemy at times. Yeah, man. You know, so it's like every now and then, it's like you gotta remind motherfuckers. So I came back talking my shit. It was like kind of let you know, like, man. Say that one more time. You, you gotta what? You gotta remind them motherfuckers. Because because they be what? <laughs> <laughs> they be what? They, they be trying to take advantage. <laughs> forget. Well, like don't forget I'm that nigga. Like, like you know what, what I'm saying? Maybe. Okay. I would tell him to maybe I'm too fucking down to earth. Like, don't forget, I'm still that nigga. I believe Webby said it best. The Trail Young Savage, what the fuck is looking like? Like, it yeah, man. So, this record is called Ain't Adding Up. I kind of addressed a lot of shit, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of niggas. Put it like this, man. It's a lot of niggas around me who ain't around me no more. Yeah. Who would have walked through these doors with me a couple years ago? Mm. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of relationships that's ended. Friendships that's dead, uh, a lot of connections, a lot of street shit that was going on, a lot of niggas home now, and we don't know how the fuck they home. It's just a lot of shit ain't adding up. So no. I had, I had, I had, it, no. yeah. But but when I drop it, it's 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 they gonna know, they gonna know. Man, I, listen, I was about this close to giving to y'all. <laughs> I was about this that because that's the that's the type of energy I'm I mean, in right we, now. We, we got you know, time. We, I, I, I'm about this close to getting to we, y'all, we but it's just it. we got time. It's just we you know what? We, we got time. Yeah, we we got to do that proper rollout for that. You just let me know. Listen, what we what, this is what we gonna do, and I'm saying it here. When I drop it in Orlando first, I'm coming to you first for the rollout. Just come on. I'll, you know what? If you do that, let's do it at night shake. Let's do it. Well, well, that, that sounds, listen. That sounds, well, that if we do it. When I come back, I'm coming to you first, and we gonna we gonna do the whole full rollout here in Orlando. You know so, what? That sounds like a plan. I'm gonna shake your hand on that. Listen, I'm telling you, I can lock me in. I'm telling you. Let's do it. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna make that. Business. Ain't adding up, man. We gonna we gonna talk we gonna talk business after that, but that's a good lock. Let's right do it. Here. I'm with it. All right. So speaking of upcoming events. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any coming up in the upcoming weeks or months that you want the world to know about? So I just I just dropped the record. Uh, I dropped a, I dropped another video for another song. Okay. Uh, that should be coming out within the next couple weeks. Um, I I. Um, Before you go on, you're dropping a video with the record, right? For another, no, this is for another song. All right. I'm so working. I need you to please I'm let working. I need you to please emphasize to young artists why for every song that comes out. It does, I mean, every song that you want to push, every song that you're serious by, why you need a video? Well, content is everything. You know what I'm saying? Now, now everybody's telling you that content is important. You know, it's so much good music out there uh, now, but people really want to see you. You know, not only do they want to see you, they want to see how you're moving in life. Like, okay, we see how it's like it's like having a bad bitch, and you want to see her on her birthday when she dressed up. How you look on a Wednesday? <sighs> You know what I'm saying? How you look when you go to Walmart? They want to know more about you. So in that in 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 dropping these videos, even if it's not a single, you just you just your storytelling, but you're displaying those records. You know those words coming to life based off of those records. You can't just make you know the the, the sales and music went down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying in the hip hop industry, and that's because everybody's rich. Nobody has a story to tell. You know everybody came in the game with a million. You know, these jits dropping first songs and they got their little scam shits and they got five hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry on and they now they rich. So why are you signed to a label? If you so rich, then why are you signing a, a fucking three hundred dollar, three sixty deal then if you that rich? Like it ain't adding up. Here we go again. You know what I'm Here saying? So it, it, it just it gotta make sense, man. You know, you rich and you live in a band of it it's it, it don't make sense to me. So uh, you gotta you gotta put the content out there, man. And you gotta and, and story start storytelling. You can't just be making songs in in front of the store. Every video, every video. You know, I made a song in front of the store because I wanted my hood to be a part of it. And and thank God I did because one of my close guys in that in that video, he he passed away to a car accident months after. But he gonna live forever in my video. So that's why I do things like that to be in, like that was a big thing for my hood. Yeah. But now I've grown since then. Now 
I'm making videos in Mexico. In in the Mayan ruins. Doing international shit. Yeah, no budget. No no right. no manager, no label. This is it's all over. It's all over. Yeah. The, yeah. So okay, so look, I know we're supposed to talk about certain stuff, but being an independent artist, that's something that we push here at Free World Radio, Indie Jam, just being an independent artist. We know the importance of it. We know why you should. But why did you? Why didn't you sign a label? Why didn't you, you know, as they say, sell out to like, I don't know, Epic Records or whoever, you know, CMG and all that? Why didn't you go sign something? Well, I think I think for me, um, I think we kind of, everybody's saying indie artists and everybody's saying, you know, it's all situational. It all depends on what type of person you is. You know what I'm mm. saying? Because everybody ain't meant to be a boss. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of these artists, they can't piss without having a manager, somebody to schedule shit for them. They don't have the communication skills to talk and set up a, a, even their own show. You know what I'm saying? So I think it depends on, you know what type of person you is. Yeah. You know, if you somebody got to keep waking you up to go to work, ain't nobody got to wake me up to get no money. You know what I'm Man. saying? Like, I, under, I understand that. Like, so I think you got to have a business mind. You got to be consistent and it, it's hard, man, but you, it also takes money. And again, it ain't adding up. These niggas really sound the labels because they need the help. They want to be independent, but as soon as somebody slide a deal on them, they're going to sign the deal because mm -hmm. they're looking for financial help. But they not a lot of a lot of artists are really not educating themselves and, and they're not investing into the information in the game to learn how the hell Lupo ain't drop an album, but he's on all these venues and big platforms and international and with you know doing a show with life, Jeezy and man. Money Bag Yo and all these other, you know, artists, and I ain't even drop an album yet. What did I do differently? You know, obviously y'all got the bag to do it, so it's, it, you gotta be educated, and I don't think it's enough um, education, and these dudes really not, you know, in taking the time to invest into learning how this shit go. They just wanna rap and record and make a song and think it's just gonna blow up. They spending more money into the video than they doing marketing. You know, Nobody, I don't, I don't think a lot of people believe in marketing. That, that's really what's wrong with young artists these days. Nobody believes in marketing. They think like, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna send the studio, I'm gonna make like two thousand songs this year, and out of that two thousand songs, I'm only gonna drop five of them. But then every time I go to a showcase or something, form the same five songs all year long. I'll never understand that mentality. I mean, I, I look at it like this, like, like. I tell it like this. It might be old down here, but it ain't. It, it, until my record on the billboards, shit, Jay Z ain't heard my record before. <laughs> 50 Cent ain't heard my record before. Mm. You know, the world hasn't heard that record. It might be old to you, but you gotta push that shit. You know Man. what I'm saying? You gotta market that. Look, I look at it like this, right? Look at everybody that you wanna be like. When you say things like, damn, okay, I don't wanna market, uh, you know, I'm gonna just keep resharing on my page. Look at people, look at look at the real people in the businesses in the world. Nike. Nike is pretty much a self-made company. They still run commercials. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> These businesses still, Coca-Cola still got commercials doing Super Bowls. Still they still marketing. paying for segments. Still marketing. So that's marketing. And until and people understand how marketing works, you know, they scared to put that money up. But if you get put the money up marketing and your business handle that money comes back through the views and everything else when you shit monetize. So, man, I don't understand it. And that's, for, that's literally free game right there. That's free game, and, man. And you know, a lot of people do not understand the power of that Facebook check or that YouTube check or that TikTok check. Like, that that really make you not even want to go work a nine to five if you're doing it right. Like, how many dudes can't even motherfucking open up a, a bank account in their name? So when you go to monetize your shit and it asks you for a routing account number, all you got is a damn cash app. Are we, are we gonna talk about half of them knowing you know what a routing number is? But then, then you, then you got, then how bad do you want it? You know what I'm saying? You gotta ask yourself that. How bad you want it? Because everything I didn't know, I found out. Man, what well, you a seeker of knowledge? I mean, honestly, if you don't know it nowadays, you can go on Google or you can go on YouTube and just ask the question. They you can really even go to Chat GPG. 
But anything, <laughs> bro. Listen. Like, you can really do whatever we... Yeah. Like, there's so... I went on the other day. Like, me and um, T, actually, we're going to Japan probably for my birthday in Japan. I mean, in um, nice. June. In June. Okay. So, you know, we've been learning um, Japanese. Before I, we even went on Duolingo, it was like, teach me Japanese. When I tell you, it literally said, it broke down a word for me. And then it said the enunciation in English so that I would know what it is. Mm -hmm. Then told me all the meanings and how every single different way to use this word. AI is getting scary, bro. Mm. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. AI is getting pretty scary. The world, listen, man. Hey, with technology, man, the world is moving fast. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. And you mean to tell me you can't figure out your account and the round number? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, man. It's not that, man. Just educate yourself. That's all I tell. If you're a new artist, man, you know, as much as energy niggas spend investing into learning uh, to scams and shit like that. You know, things to get money illegally, you know, take that same that, that same energy, take that money to, uh, you know, learn the game, man, and, and, and legally set yourself up. So, you know, you know, hopefully you can start getting some money off of your shit. And it's, not, it's nothing more better, man, than going on and checking your, uh, you know, whatever, checking your dis distribution account and saying that you got some money on there from bitches just looking at your, your show. YouTube, you know, YouTube, Facebook, yeah. Amazon, uh, like just everything. That, yeah. it'd be, it's really crazy out there. Yes, sir. Well, before I let you go, you know I couldn't let you leave without bringing up a past incident in Miami. You want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about it? There's I mean, so many. Which one do you want to know? Well, I, mean, uh, I know I know for a fact when I was looking on you, you know, doing some research and everything, I saw something with you and ASAP Ferg. Now, I'm not going to say what happened, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. What happened, bro? Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's, so it's, it's been a while ago since that happened, but, um, you know, I feel kind of, you know, I always got to, I, I live by telling the truth, but, As you should. but, but I, I will say, uh, him and I, you know, we shook on it, you know, we, we both understood what a disconnect was, and um and um and you know I understand things happen, but it's it ain't what it ain't what happens, it's 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 how you handle what happens. Man. So I, I just I, I, it ain't no hostility to you know ASAP or none of them dudes, you know, out they camp. Um, you know, we're in a nightclub, we're in a nightclub and we partying and um and you know at the time one of my guys, one of my close friends, you know, was playing for the Saints. And um, I got everybody with me in the club. Jimmy Graham at the time, so let's go back years. Mark Ingram, you know, it's a lot of us in the building, man. You know, we, we big guys. You know, we <laughs> six three, six six, three hundred pounds, three forty. So uh, you know, we got the big section in front of the DJ booth, and he's in the DJ booth, and uh, <laughs> he, he popped the champagne and spraying everybody, uh... and, and he's spraying us. But we thinking. We thinking it's the club letting out some type of confetti or yeah, the no. South Beach. I don't know if y'all went to South Beach, but a lot of times they'll put this little mist. Yeah. And they'll So you'll think it's mist. So I'm looking, I'm like, man, this ain't no damn mist. This shit's too thick. <laughs> I'm here to wipe this shit like Nigga, we bought nigga, we, we you know we hey we, we bought outfits, nigga. We just yeah, bought this no, shit. This, nigga. this shit droopy. Yeah, <laughs> nigga, you know, right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh you know, he just, he, he basically, he champagne shot what I had. Oh, no, with no, no. Without no trophies. But, he said without no trophies. I, I think, man, he got caught up in the moment. My opinion, he partied it because he sprayed the DJ boot. And the one thing I remember, the DJ was so mad. All I remember, he, he taking nap and he was patting the shit out of his equipment yeah. because the electrical parts. So he pat, 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 pat. And so I already knew he in Miami, you know, he got a little hit song out at the time. He was shot by rank shit, I think it yeah. was. And um <laughs> and, and he just honestly, bro, he was just caught up in the moment. But me, you know, I'm a pit bull. Like I'm a, <laughs> I, I wouldn't think about none of that. You Real know what I'm saying? And, and truthfully, I ain't single him out. I didn't know who he was on that level. Like I didn't know the face. Yeah, you was just reacting. Yeah, I was just cause he had the shades on and shit, and I had my shades on. And when he sprayed, I was I just seen the nigga spraying. And, I, and and the way it was was like our section was right here, and the DJ booth was right like 
Like the DJ booth is behind us. How the club was set up. Yeah. The DJ booth is behind you. Our club is here, and we're looking this way. So they stand and face the same way, but just behind us. So I had to turn around, and I'm like, hey. I said, hey, check this out. And I'm like, yo, pull up. And when he linked over, I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind was just choking. <laughs> so I just choked the shit out of his ass. But you know, uh, man, I ain't, I ain't do it for no shit, man. You know, it, it, it was just a reaction. I got a lot of situations where people know, like, it ain't nothing new. If you're from Miami, you know me. You know, like, man, man. don't play with that one. You know, man. I'm cool, but it's just like, don't. No it, disrespect, it's me, bro. It's Miami, like at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? So, but but I will I will say, and I'm and I'm, not, I'm gonna keep it 100. I will say he did um he did apologize, bro. He he did apologize, and um he shouted us out. He was outnumbered, <laughs> you know. He was way outnumbered, but he apologized. He performed. He apologized. We shook hands on it. Um, only only thing I don't only thing sometimes I don't like talking about the incident is because. Uh, I don't want to make it like it's an ongoing beef. Of course. Or I'm using that plowing. You know, it takes away from the hard work that I'm doing. Of course. But I know people Google shit to see stories, so I address it. So I always try to put that out there and make it, you know, make it right. You know, and once again, we go back to the humbleness that you display because anybody else would have came in here, oh man, let me tell you what I did. And so I was like, nah, bro, you explained the story, you told what happened, and then you even told it's. It's not even what it is, whatever you think it is. This is what it is. You set the record straight. You know, that's what we like to see in like, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's what we love to see in a developed artist. Because yeah. you literally, like, that's the whole package. Listen, man, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a situation where I had to put my hands on some artist that's a bigger name than him. And I won't speak on it. And I mean, I mean, level like top. I would say they would be top. Billboards? Oh, definitely, for sure, billboards. For yeah. sure, billboards. I would say they would be top, as far as number goes, a top 15 artist. I had to put my hands on and I And I and I, ain't put it, I never put it out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but just based off of who he's, who he got a kid from. Mm -hmm. The woman that he got a kid from is an icon. Mm -hmm. So I would never put it out there, the, you know, the clout. But yeah, I had to, I had to put my hands on that boy. You know what I'm saying? You know, seeing the seriousness through your shades? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. for real. I, I really, his, yeah. his, shit was, his shit was, it was real. But, yeah. you know, like I said, we don't, we don't, we don't look for that energy, bro. You nah. know what I'm saying? But with me, because I'm such a big guy, I don't know what it is. It's like, I could have three other guys with me from 5'9", and they're going to come to me and try to chest me, check me. I'm like, why would you come to me? I'm the biggest thing in the car. I'll throw your ass through this wall. Like, you, you know, it's always that. I, it's I, ego, I, man. It's yeah, a lot of ego. I, 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 really, issue, man. I really believe pride is like the downfall of every great person. Yeah, like, man. Like, to me, it's unnecessary, though, because it's like, I believe in building bridges, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I love going. It's nothing like going to another city and you got guys that you fuck with. Like in Orlando, I can call up Tony Boy. You know what I'm saying? Tony uh, Rose? Yeah, you know, bro, that's the bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I call he was up on, Tony Boy. He was on Mixtape Five, my Mixtape Five. Man, listen, they, these are guys that I built relationships with, man. You know, just that's genuine hard. guys, man. That I can call up, they gonna pick up the phone. That's hard. And, and he called me when he shot a video. He wanted to shoot it in Miami with Trip when he did his uh the my baby mom mm. uh, that one. He the, the, he called me and I called Trip that for him because he want at the time he wanted to. He wanted to sing with Trick, but the time was bad. But he called me, and and I was gonna make that happen for him. And we got Trick on the phone, but it's always good. You never know how you are gonna need somebody. Not saying that you got relationships to need them, but it's good to have those build those building build, build them rock, well, with other cities. I, I feel like I feel like more so we make connections because you never know when you, you never know when you're falling, and somebody's gonna have that pillar that actually keeps you up. Like, you never know when your next big event is going to come your way. Or you never know when, like, hell, just even an event in general. Like, I was blessed. That I go to Full Sail. So, okay. with that, you know, I, a lot of my teachers are already, like, working different stuff. And I actually got to do a breast cancer walk. Breast cancer walk for the city. Mm -hmm. And then backdoored it. And, I've done that, too. And did the um, fashion show in City Hall. Two places I never would have thought of being if I would have never just been like, hey, how you doing? You know, simple, just real life, simple connections that I never would have thought about 
and just, hey, you free? Oh, shit. Right, right. But see, but believe what you said, full self. Think mm -hmm. about it. The guy who who, who actually walked me into the, the, the to the television came from full self. I believe it. The head producer. I believe it. So, it, again, and then it's like, yo, you want the full cell? I introduce you guys. Now what? Hey, my guy with the full cell, he going to full cell right now. Is everything you do with him? Now I make a call for you and introduce you guys, and you make a good impression. Now guess what? You win now. You doing other business and other entities. Don't do that. I wouldn't know what to do. Look, you know well, what I'm saying? I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. You'd be, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be surprised, man. You'd be surprised how easy going and how cool guys is, and they 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 don't mind. Everybody don't mind. And you know that's I guess when you when you had, when we talked about it earlier, that's really the reason why I do these interviews because I like talking to people and figuring out like, hey, you really are you really got your shit going right now? Like you got everything going for you, and you're humble. Yeah. Hey, bro, you're cool yeah. as fuck. You yeah, you're yeah. cool as fuck, Yeah, 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 man. But I, I think I'm pretty much one of the most understood. Artists, at least in my city, okay. you know, I get a lot of love. Put it like this, I get a lot of love in my city, but a lot of people who know me misunderstood me because they can't. It's hard for them to identify me as an artist mm. when they know my history from other things. Uh, so it's like they're not gonna respect uh, that until I get there, and then it's like, man, that nigga artist. But when you know me for other things, you still look at me like I know him from when he mm. used to. Blah, 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 blah. So it's hard for them to really. Digest that, you know what I'm saying? And some people can't accept the new year. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's growth at the end of the day. You know, it's growth, but, but you, again, I don't, with me, I pay, I'm, a, I'm very observant. I pay attention to the people that I want to be like. You know, why does Ross live in Atlanta? Who? Why does Boosie live in Atlanta? Who? Why are all the most productive people in the game? Why does 50 Cent live in Texas? It's hard to live in your hometown because nobody really wants to admit it, but you know, as much you're too easy accessible, and it's a lot of jealousy and it's a lot of hate. That's why they say when you make it, never go back home. Yeah, like I mean, you can go back home, just case. make just just move proper. You understand what you I'm saying? Got to do more to move proper. You got to move secure. Yeah, I call it. I, I I was just telling my I was just telling my my guy Dex. I was telling him, man, you know. My team, we move like we when I'm when I'm with my guys, mm -hmm. we move militant. As you should. So I get upset if somebody go get fooled and one person's still here and we separate because in an instant somebody can catch you slipping by yourself and you ain't got your whole team with you and now you anything can happen. Our situation. My guys, when I do shows, I have guys that sit outside and don't even come to and don't even come in the club. They're just outside sitting by the cars all night just to secure me walking out see and that's smart i mean i know i know this is part of the maybe this is part of my na naivety you know with, with young with bigger artists yeah. but that's smart as fuck to me because literally at the end of the day if i'm walking out the club with a bag and i know you know everybody know me i'm of course i want a team around me that's going to be like hey get the fuck out of my way well, well the, normally, the first thing is, when, if you ain't got guns or weapons in the club, the main thing is everybody's trying to get to the car, exactly. where everything is. Exactly. I believe in having people already there with it. So anybody else outside watching me or anything like that, and, and again, you got to be careful about the type of music that you make because now it's such a clout chasing uh, industry where, you know, people want to try to rob, take the chain or beat you up. Just in video and, and pre plan and have it premeditated just so they can become successful or have a storyline and things like that. So, yeah. you know, I make, I make it very clear that I make, I go far beyond to uh, make example out of niggas. Like, I, 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 I really don't play that shit. Like, I'm cool as fuck and I'm down to earth. I joke a lot. But it's another side that niggas, people know, I, I just, I, I can't afford to have you play with me. There we go. You no, know, it, it goes beyond the music. Yeah. Like, it's just, I'm gonna make it home. Your life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it home. Yeah, your life. Your life is too precious. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I got lawyers on deck. Like, it's, I'm not even finna play with you. I don't because I don't. I don't welcome negative energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big dude. Even if you stepped on my toes, I say, hey, my bad, big dog. You can be five four, but I make you feel big. I respect. I say, my bad, big homie. As you and dap you up. As and you people should. respect you, but you got some dudes because they big. They try to flex their muscles and. 
be stuck in my shoes. Now y'all want to shoot the club? But I'm not that guy. Man. I come in and have a good time. I want to make it home. But if you come with the bullshit, let's let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> we you know we gonna take it though. But yeah, man, you know it's just it's just things you got to deal with as an artist on the road, out of town. You know these small country towns. It's um, different out there, ain't it? Man, true story, man. I, I went to uh, I went and did a show with um, what his name is? Not money bag. Finesse two times. Mm. I did a show with Finesse two times by myself in Waycross, Georgia, which is in the deep country part of Georgia. I mean, pitch yeah. black dark. Yeah. Dead deer, every fucking half a mile. You gotta worry about jumping out. Real country shit. Listen, I took <laughs> I took I took my nine year old daughter. I took my nine year old daughter and a pregnant. And a pregnant wife <laughs> with me <laughs> in the middle into the way cross and I left them at the hotel and I pulled up in that bitch by myself, bro. Man. You know, Cuban link on, I ain't had this chain. I had my Cuban link on mm -hmm. and everything. And I only knew one nigga who was helped set the show up. He was from Miami, DJ Rama. Shout out DJ Rama, City Girls DJ. You know, he connected me on that play. And um uh, and I pulled up in that shit, bro. And, and but I'm, but I feel like this, you know, real niggas is worldwide. Niggas gonna have to respect my presence, bro. If you a cooch ass, soft ass nigga, you ain't going in that bitch by yourself. Nah, you gotta have. I fun. walked in that bitch by myself, bro, with my Cuban link on, gas station. I made it, everything by myself, me and my pistol. You know what I'm saying? I gotta be smart. I did my show. I handled my business by myself. They showed me love. It was respect. Them niggas showed respect. But people, like I said, man, it's all about how you carry yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't coming on no tough guy shit. You know, I just came like a G. You know, I moved mm -hmm. proper. And they respect me. You know what I'm saying? And it was all love. And I and I fuck with that city for that shit. I, I never heard of Wake Cross, Georgia until I did that show for the next two times. But, you know, he did the back end shit. I opened them up, brought them out. Mm -hmm. They showed me love. And, and and I got up out of there. It was it was no problem. It was no issues. You know what I'm saying? But in my own my hometown, I got to have thirty niggas come out to the show. Cause you never know. It's it's just it's a it's a different it's different mentality. You know? Yeah. It's like I said. It's, it sucks that you know. And then it's real bad because sometimes it be the people that like really saw you come up. You supposed to really, you know, you supposed to be over here kicking it. But you on the other side. And you right. don't even have to be on the other side. You choose to be on the other side because you refuse to just go be on this side. I, egos. Egos, man. You know, this this the world has a lot of egos and, and sadly, man, it's you know, it's it's costing people a lot of things that could benefit them in life. It's costing them relationships, it's costing them friendships, it's costing them good business partners. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people, man, you know, they just refuse to take accountability. And just be solid people in this world, man. You can be a good guy in this world, and we all can get some money, man. Mm -hmm. But you know, jealousy, man, is 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 is. They say money. I say jealousy, man. Jealousy is the root of all evil to me. Who you know? It's always that homeboy that you fed and slept on your couch, and you, and you fed money to him. You showed him the game, and just because you showed him the same game, and and you got more out of it because you invested and you went harder in the same shit you told him. You know, he be the one stab you in the back. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm not with the guys that I started out doing with the, with, with, in the rap game, right. sadly, because of that type of same mentality. You know, jealousy. So it is what it is. You got to be careful in this game, man. It's, it's a dangerous yeah. time. It's a dangerous yeah. time to be an arch, bro. Yeah, that it is. Yeah. Well, we're gonna end on a good note here. Um, shout outs that you want to give to any and everybody out there. Man, shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to Orlando, man. You know, always welcoming every class, you know, for the last couple of years. It's always been love here, man. I love it here. I got a lot of family here. Uh, you know, I got a lot of big connections here, man. Shout out, to, shout out to all that, man. Shout out to my guys, man, my homeboys. You know, they come in from South Carolina with me. You know, it, it take a lot for, you know, niggas to support you. And um, and I take, I take pride in anybody supporting me because nowadays, man, you know, I got people I know all my life that don't support me. And you got guys that support you Ooh. and go out your way to support you and come from another state to support you. Another country. Another country, man. Yeah, man. I, it, shout out to everybody, man. Orlando, you know, I, I run my city. Shout out to Dade County. You know, shout out to my family. You know what I'm saying? Monique, London Journey, my family, my love. You know, 
everybody, man. You know, anybody who rock with Lubo, man, shout out to y'all, man. All the DJs, you feel me? I, I, pre I really, really, I'm one of the people, man, I appreciate everybody, dog, because, you know, <clears throat> Like I said, man, you know, it's it's no better feeling than to get support from a stranger. You know, you kind of you, you kind of expect to get that hope, that support from people you know. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm a guy. I get more love from strangers than people I know, and I appreciate it. I don't never take it for granted. So, I'm honored, man, I'm, and I'm thankful and blessed. And um, hopefully, man, you know, y'all gonna y'all gonna see a lot of me. Well. With that, we appreciate you coming on this show, blessing us with the knowledge and gems. Oh, oh man, you can't pull me like I'm smaller than you. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I just play football, bro. I got that grip, man. Well, well, I, I ran track, so I'm good at running away. Right? There you go. All right. So, <laughs> with that being, oh wait, I almost forgot. We got too much, too real into it. All right, oh, so talk to me. I need an acapella, sixteen bar. Right now, just give me something real. Sorry, son, real off the top. Off the top, it just, just, just bless the free world before we get out of here. All uh, right. Yeah. I can't fuck with these fake niggas and fake hoes. Niggas will change on you like fake gold. Nigga, I get that pace so. Nigga, the birds move when I say so. When it's smoke, these pussy ass niggas better lay low. I got hoes that do what I say so, like hey ho. Niggas talking all that shit, but I'm about that. Fuck all the bullshit. I want the smoke. They want trying to get their clock back. Trying to test Lubo, I push him out back. Niggas talking all that, but I smile that. Nigga, I'm throwback, nigga. Forty Glock on me. Niggas can't stop me, homie. Niggas know I been popping. Bitches been jocking. All that shit the niggas talking, I been popping. Niggas catch me with the top down. Niggas talking all that shit, but niggas mad because I'm hot now. Says prices on my head, but I'm still riding through the city with the top down. Niggas won't smoke, they get popped now. Bitch bad, bitches getting knocked down. I mean, they know I'm on that. Talking all that shit, niggas trying to get their gun back. Yeah, I rain on me, I keep that thing on me. Nigga go anywhere with nigga with my chain on me. I do my thing, homie. Yeah, they know that. Keep my black ass. Yo. <laughs> you like, man. Shout out to whoever. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to whoever. You like, man. <laughs> Shout out to my mom for calling during. Uh, <laughs> she said he had done choking, nigga. Hold on. 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 Hold <laughs> All right, so before we get out, we do have one more song for us. We do, we did not forget. Go ahead and introduce the last song. And to the free world, thank y'all for tuning in today. And without further ado, yeah, yeah, man, it's your boy Lubo. Actually, I filmed this video in Orlando. There we go. So, uh, yeah, man, you know, it's only right. You know, I drop two fucks, you know, shows. Make sure y'all tune in, lock in, fuck with me on all platforms Lubo Music, L E W B O. Music and y'all from listening to Two Fucks. Check that out on YouTube now. Yo. <laughs> um, all right. So, important question. When are you trying to do?